hola, buenas tardes, muchísimas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros en nuestra charla de este mes. Este mes nos acompaña un representante del programa de Running Start de Clark College. Nos informará sobre los beneficios que tiene el programa, la manera que nuestros estudiantes pueden participar y cuáles son requisitos para ser aceptados. Hola, Brian, muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Brian, ¿nos puedes decir poquito de, de ti y quién eres? Y para las personas que están viendo, Brian habla inglés, pero yo voy a traducir lo que diga en español para que ustedes puedan entender. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for being here today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Clark College? Yeah. Hi, my name is Brian Van Gundy. I am the Associate Director of Dual Enrollment and Special Admissions Programs. Um, and a big focus of my work at Clark is Running Start and making sure that students have a good pathway into the program and that once they're in the program that they are successful and know what they're achieving while they're here at Clark. So essentially, I'm the one who kind of puts all the different pieces together when students are here on campus. Awesome. Brian dijo que él es el director asociado de programas de inscripción doble de administración especiales del programa de Running Start. Él se encarga de todo lo que pasa en el programa desde eh, este solicitar para el programa y también trabaja con los estudiantes cuando ya están en el campus en este programa. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the questions for today. What exactly is Running Start? Ahora vamos a empezar con las preguntas. ¿Qué exactamente es Running Start y por qué deben de ustedes saber esta información? So how does this program work? ¿Cómo funciona este programa? Yeah, so Running Start, it's a program that essentially just allows um, eligible high school juniors and seniors to take classes at a community college to receive not only high school credit, but then also college credit for their successfully completed classes. And with the exception of books and some fees, uh, tuition expenses are essentially covered by the state for any student who's coming from a public high school. Um, so within that program, students are able to receive up to two years of college credit through the program, potentially even a transfer degree, but that's not necessarily required. Um, and then they can do those classes while also completing the remaining high school requirements for high school graduation. While on campus, Running Start students have access to everything that a regular student would have at Clark College, uh, which includes um, academic and career advisors, use of our facilities like the gym and the fitness center, and then also access to all the uh, activities that we have here on campus. So you really are a Clark College student while you're in high school doing your high school requirements. And to join the program, students essentially just need permission from their high school counselors and then their parents or guardians, and it's important to connect with your high school counselor during like your sophomore or junior year before you plan on starting your coursework. Um, essentially, you know, around sophomore year is when you can start having that conversation with your high school counselor and you can really start getting into whether or not this is going to really work for you um, as an option. And it's great for students who are really just ready to get started um, on their college coursework and are potentially just looking for something different than the normal high school experience. Yeah. Bueno, para las personas que están escuchando, yo hice el programa de Running Start cuando estaba en una high school y lo que significa este programa es que los estudiantes que están en la high school o en la prepa pueden hacer créditos de colegio al mismo tiempo que están haciendo créditos con el high school. Esto significa que van a graduar el high school y el colegio comunitario al mismo tiempo, entonces se avanzan dos años. En este programa esencialmente es pagado por el gobierno. Hay unos libros y unas admisiones que necesita pagar el estudiante, pero realmente casi todo el programa es gratis y esto ayuda muchísimo, muchísimo. Uh, Brian dijo que si está interesado en este programa es más mejor que vaya con el counselor, como en el año, vamos a decir, en el grado 10, para que puedan estar preparados para hacer este programa en los últimos dos años de la prepa. Anything else you mentioned, Brian, you said um, pretty much it's the last two years mm -hmm. of high school. You graduate uh, community college and high school at the same time. You have, you want to talk to your counselor around sophomore year, right? Um, that way you're ahead prepared for junior year. And it's pretty much a free program. It's paid by the state besides some books and some fees that you have to pay. Anything else you wanted me to mention? Yeah, um, it's, typically it's going to be a two-year program because a lot of students, they start their junior year and senior year and then get an associate's degree, but it doesn't have to be that. There are some students who come in and they start their senior year because maybe junior year they're still trying to get their uh, math to the right level or English to the right level, um, and they start their senior year instead. Some students, when they are doing Running Start, they're on our campus for their full school day, so they essentially never go back to their high school. Some students 
students just do one class or maybe two classes here and then do the rest of their classes um, you know at their high school that way if they still want to be involved you know with high school clubs sports etc they can still do that and they can kind of have an experience where they're taking some classes at the high school um, at the high school level while also doing a couple of college level classes to start working on college credit so a lot of people will get their two-year transfer degree but it's certainly not every single student and you can absolutely get a lot out of your running start experience in just a year if that's the time that you have to be here okay brian dijo que este programa no es exactamente lo mismo para todas las personas bueno en mi caso yo hice los dos últimos años de la prepa y me gradué eh, con los mi, mi asociados de my associate's degree en el colegio, pero no es, significa que va a ser así para todas las personas. Vamos a decir que una persona se ingresa a este programa el último año de la prepa y tiene, ya ahora va a estar avanzado un año. Entonces, no significa que todas las personas necesitan que empezar el junior year o necesitan que empezar, este, pensar en este programa en el sophomore year. Todo es a como usted lo quiere. También vamos a decir que una persona puede, un estudiante puede tomar sus clases medio tiempo en el colegio y luego medio tiempo en la prepa. O pueden ingresar full time en el colegio y ya no participar en su prepa. En mi caso, yo participé full time en el community college, pero hay unas personas que todavía tienen esa experiencia de estar en la prepa, estar en deportivos y todo eso. Y está bien porque este programa lo que está haciendo es solamente avanzando a los estudiantes que quieren a, a un nivel que ellos quieren. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brian, for that. Um, so how do I know the Running Star program is right for my student? ¿Cómo sé si el programa de Running Star es adecuado para mi estudiante? Yeah, so Running Start, it's an excellent opportunity for those students who are looking to really kind of challenge themselves academically, get a head start on their college courses, or maybe they just want an alternative to the traditional high school experience. It is important to keep in mind that Running Start courses, they really are college level courses. Um, and college classes schedules, um, they're a lot different than your traditional high school schedule. Students spend less overall time in the classroom and are expected to put a little bit more time into studying and homework um, on their own, own time outside of the class. And while we absolutely offer support like tutoring, library services, and career and academic advising, it is important for students to have those time management and study skills to be successful in their Running Start coursework. Thankfully, the majority of Running Start students, um, they start with College 101, and you may be, maybe that's exactly where you started. Um, they usually take that class in their first term while at Clark, and in College 101, students essentially get an introduction to the college and college life. Um, some of the topics that they discuss include goal setting, uh, personal uh, management skills like time management, um, developing an academic plan, not only just here at Clark, but then if they plan on transferring or continuing with one of our career and technical programs at Clark, they can start planning for that very early. Um, they, we work on communication skills, interpersonal and professional communication skills, financial literacy, and then just give kind of an introduction to resources at the college. So it's important that students have those study and time management skills, but then we also offer those resources so they can develop those skills here on campus. But at the end of the day, students should just have an understanding that it is, it, there is gonna be a big difference between their high school experience and their running start experience we will expect more from them a little bit more maturity um, in the classroom while talking uh, you know going through some of those topics etc um, but at the end of the day we do provide those resources so students can also build those skills and become better students while they're here taking classes Awesome. Brian dice que este programa es son para los estudiantes que de verdaderamente quieren avanzar, sienten que ellos ya están listos para hacer más que la prepa y también eso significa que ellos están listos en sus matemáticas, en todas las cosas que se les están enseñando en las escuelas y eh, sí de verdaderamente dice Brian que aunque es algo que es avanzado, por el colegio, a veces solamente las clases son como una hora al día o un estudiante va a la clase como tres horas al colegio. Pero eso significa que a lo mejor están poniendo tres, cuatro, cinco horas al día haciendo tareas. Porque estas clases sí son al nivel del colegio. Por ejemplo, yo solamente iba al, al colegio como unas tres horas al día, pero pasaba mucho tiempo haciendo tareas, escribiendo, leyendo, las matemáticas, todo eso. Pero vayan, quiere que sepan que aunque 
estas clases podían ser un poquito más difícil, ellos sí tienen el apoyo para ayudar a sus estudiantes. Ellos tienen muchísimos cursos donde pueden ir a un, un estudiante para tener, para tener ese apoyo, como la clase que se llama College 101. Esto los va a ayudar a ellos, right? You said it was College 101, correct? Yeah, it's called College 101. Yeah, uh, College 101, esta clase les va a ayudar a ellos este, manejar su tiempo, una traducción al colegio y planear un formulario para su tiempo en el colegio por si ellos quieren transferar a otra universidad después de este colegio. Entonces realmente dice Brian que aunque sean clases más avanzadas, ellos quieren que sepan que sí tienen el apoyo allí en Clark College. Awesome, thank you. So what classes can they take? ¿Qué clases pueden tomar mi estudiante? So anything that's college level is open for uh, Running Start students. And when I say college level, I just mean that they count as uh, college level credit and would transfer to another institution. Um, we do offer classes that are below uh, college level, but typically students have to pay for those if they need to take them. And at that point, we would recommend staying at the high school to build up your skills so you can take college level courses. Um, typically, most Running Start students have sort of a standard schedule for their first term, which includes that College 101 course. Um, and then they, after their first term, they start to receive more specific advising that's based on their academic goals and interests. So, for instance, if the student knows that they want to pursue biology to eventually become a doctor or pursue just some sort of like medical path, um, we can start them on that pathway. Um, and we have the same type of thing for engineering, English, psychology, or any other interest that they might want to pursue. So if a student is, um, you know, already has a plan set for them or they already have an idea of what they want to do, we can just get them on, all, on one of our pre-made pathways so they can start taking those courses that they're going to need to be successful in those programs or that they're going to need to take when they, you know, start college after high school. Um, so they can kind of get a head start on that. But if a student doesn't necessarily know, that's totally okay. Um, and we can put them on more of a general transfer plan that will help them transfer to a four-year college. And then in terms of um, to making sure that they take courses that actually meet their high school requirements, because that is part of the program, is that you your classes are not only fulfilling your um, uh, Clark College requirements are also fulfilling your graduation requirements for the high school. We work with each high school to create sort of uh, an equivalence, equivalency list, which is basically just uh, which classes at Clark equal those same classes that the students need to take at the high school. So working with the plans that we've already created, that we already have set up for students, and then looking at the required courses for their high school, we're able to create a suggested plan um, for students to kind of just follow along with, with the, in their two years, but then there's also flexibility within that, right? Um, because if you have a requirement to take a history class, we have a lot of history courses. So depending on your specific interest, you can kind of pick which history class or which humanities course that you really want to pursue. And it's really based on your interest and what you want to study. And that's honestly a really great way just to kind of learn about the college programs and about what you are interested in. Um, so honestly, if you're someone who is really not sure what you want to pursue um, after high school, Running Start can be a great opportunity to kind of start learning about some of these areas, learning about some of these disciplines, and just learning about some of the opportunities that you have, um, you know, after high school. And like I said at the beginning, it does not need to be uh, that you're here at Clark full time working on that two year transfer degree. It could just be you're taking a couple of courses um, each term to kind of start building up your um, college transcript, which is basically just a list of all the college classes that you've taken, um, and you can start building those skills and just getting a better idea of what you're interested in. So all that to say, you're able to take any college level course and then we will also help you to select courses that meet your high school requirements and then also will meet your future, you know, educational goals. Okay. Brian dice que, bueno, el estudiante puede tomar las clases que son a nivel del colegio. A veces lo que pasa es que unos estudiantes no prueban entre esas clases de colegio, entonces vamos a decir 
um, que empieza, de un estudiante debe empezar en una matemática de clase de 101 o 100 para arriba, pero a lo mejor no prueba en este programa y necesita que sea un poquito más bajo. En este caso, el estudiante sí necesitaría que pagar por estas clases porque no son a nivel colegio, pero si el estudiante ya está a nivel colegio, ellos pueden tomar las clases que quieran. Esto específicamente ayuda muchísimo si un estudiante ya sabe lo que quiere estudiar en su carrera. Vamos a decir, como dijo Brian, que el estudiante quiere estudiar biología o quiere este, ser médico. Allí en Clark, Clark College le van a ayudar a escoger esas clases específicamente que le van a ayudar a ser su programa de médico que duraría muchos años. Entonces, um, si sí, un estudiante puede tomar las clases las que quiera y que... Um, sirvan para su interés. Al mismo tiempo, dice Brian, que también ayuda para los estudiantes que no significamente uh, saben qué, qué plan, qué carrera quieren, porque hay tantas clases en el colegio que literalmente un estudiante puede escoger lo que quiera y es para ayudarle a él este, saber sus intereses. Por ejemplo, en mi caso, yo pensé que quería ir a la escuela por algo de salud. Y luego me metí al colegio, hice running start, tomé unas clases de salud y no me gustó. De allí empecé a tomar otras clases de, de escribir, de este periodismo, de mucho más. Y allí yo aprendí que eso es lo que me gustaba hacer a mí. Entonces, sí, es un buen, buen programa para aprender tus intereses en este programa. Um, so, I talked about, about the interest, um, how it's like good for people who don't have a plan, good for people who do have a plan, right? Um, anything else you wanted me to mention? Um, also, I talked about how like you have to um, be at the college level and then you have to pay if you don't necessarily are at the college level. Um, I don't think so. Um, I guess one other thing to add is that you know, if you're unsure whether or not you're ready to take, you know, college level courses, we've already worked out equivalencies with the high school. So connecting with your high school counselor is important because you may have already taken, you know, the equivalency of our kind of introductory math and you're ready to take a college level math course and you may not even be aware of it. Um, so connect with your high school counselor if you have specific questions about that um, and they can give you some like more specific guidance on whether or not you're ready to take those courses. And then of course, reach out to us as well if you have other questions. Brian dice que es importante de hablar con el consejero que está en su prepa para saber si usted está listo para estas clases. Si usted siente que no está listo para estas clases de colegio, a lo mejor sí está, porque lo que hace Clark College y trabaja con las prepas en la área para saber cuáles son las, las clases que son a casi al mismo nivel, porque también en la prepa ofrecen clases que, clases que son más avanzadas. Um, y dice um, Brian que es un buen, una buena cosa que hable con el consejero para saber si esta es una dirección que usted quiere tener. Okay, so what class, uh, we already talked about what classes they can take. Um, so how do I know which classes at Clark apply toward the high school graduation requirement? Talked a little bit about that. Um, ¿cómo, sé, ¿Cómo sé qué clases en Clark se aplican a los requisitos de graduación de la escuela secundaria? Yeah, so this is something we put a lot of work into, making sure that we connect with the high schools in the area, have an understanding of their course requirements, and then we build an equivalency guide. Um, so a lot of those, um, in terms of how those course requirements are fulfilled, those high school requirements are fulfilled, we've already done that work for you. So as long as we know your school district, which we're going to know from your uh, from your forms and your application, we'll be able to guide you on the correct classes to take so that you can complete those high school requirements. And it's actually really interesting because, um, and I learned this through doing admissions work at WSU Vancouver, believe it or not, um, that to complete like a high school requirement typically takes a year of doing the coursework at the high school, whereas it just takes a quarter at, um, at Clark College. So some students are able to complete their high school requirements well in advance and really kind of have the last two terms of running start to take classes that they're particularly interested in or that may be applied directly to their program that they're looking to transfer into once they complete high school. Um, so a lot of that work is already done um, with the school districts and we create those equivalency forms uh, before you've even arrived so you already know which classes you need to take. 
Ya, yeah, ok. Bueno, Brian dice que realmente ellos ya tienen todo planeado para su estudiante. Ellos tienen un formulario de guía que tienen las clases que deben de ser su estudiante en la prepa, que también um, cuentan con la misma crédito en el colegio y viceversa. Esta clase del colegio cuenta como una clase en, en la prepa. Una cosa buena que dice Brian es que a veces una clase, un crédito puede tomar todo un año en la prepa. Bueno, en el colegio es muy diferente el tiempo. Puede solamente tomar un cuatrimestre que solamente es tres meses. Entonces, un estudiante realmente puede hacer todas sus clases de la prepa que necesita mucho más rápido en el colegio y por esa razón es, se llama Running Star porque está más avanzado el programa. Um, we already talked about this, so, but just to kind of say it again, what does it cost to be a Running Star student? ¿Cuánto cuesta para estar en el programa de Running Start? Yeah, so tuition, uh, the tuition is covered by the school district. Um, so that's kind of like the biggest expense is kind of tuition that you pay per course. Um, what Running Start students end up being charged are the additional fees that are attached to each course and then any books that are um, part of the program. Typical course fees are going to be between $30 to $45 per course, and the majority of Running Start students are taking between one and three classes each term. Um, for books, you're looking typically between $50 to $150 per book, um, and depending on how many classes you're taking, that you could need anywhere from one to maybe maybe five or six books a term. So what it ends up looking like is a normal full-time Washington resident who takes classes at Clark typically is going to pay around like $1,700 per term. For a Running Start student that is taking all three classes, so their maximum the classes they can take each term is going to pay about $258. Now, there are options for fee waivers if you meet specific uh, requirements. So if you um, are eligible, if you the student are eligible for free or reduced price lunch, um, you are eligible for a fee waiver and you can have those fees waived. If your family is receiving any type of public assistance from a state or a federal program, these could be SNAP benefits or something similar, uh, you can be eligible for a fee waiver. Um, if you have ever interacted with the foster care system in any way or have been a part of the foster system, you'll be eligible for that fee waiver. So if you meet any of those requirements, you could potentially have those fees waived. Um, and then for books, there are additional um, scholarships available uh, for students who need help paying for books. So, so for some students, they end up paying nothing for Running Start because they're eligible for fee waivers. But in general, the maximum you would end up ever being charged is just a couple hundred dollars per term to get college level courses. And again, that ends up being a savings of, you know, a thousand dollars or more per, per term. Yeah, so Brian dice que realmente un estudiante está eh, um, guardando muchísimo, muchísimo dinero haciendo este programa. Él dijo que usualmente un estudiante de Running Start solamente está pagando una tarifa y los libros, que serán como unos 100 dólares de tarifa y unos 30, 60 dólares por los libros cada uno, que significa que un estudiante solamente está pagando unos 258 dólares cada trimestre. Eso a comparación a un estudiante que está a tiempo comp completo en el Clark College que usualmente pagan $1,700 dólares cada trimestre. Entonces, eh, está guardando muchísimo, muchísimo dinero en este programa. En mi caso, eh, yo no tuve que pagar una tarifa porque hay ayuda con la tarifa. Y dijo Brian que hay muchas diferentes calificaciones que pueden um, ser aceptados para esta, para esta tarifa. Brian, can you go ahead and... Um, talk a little bit more about the fee waiver exactly, the qualifications, just yeah. so I can go ahead and- um, I actually have a really great running start cost breakdown um, up on my computer. Can I share my screen? Yeah, of and course, that'd be that great. Way? Awesome, cool, so let me- Brian nos va a enseñar un foto del costo de running start a comparado a un- All right. are you able to see that? Estudiante normal. Yes, I can see that. Awesome. Okay, so it really just kind of, this is just sort of a breakdown of all the costs that you could potentially have as a Running Start student. Um, so starting with the student ID card, there is a $9 fee to get your student ID, but that student ID gets you access to a variety of different things. It also um, it can be used as like a photo ID for various purposes. 
Um, there is a, an associated student's fee. This is essentially a, uh, a fee that covers matriculation, technology on campus, and a couple other things. That's $7.25 per term. And then the course fees are kind of where you get your, sort of your bigger expense. And again, these are going to be between $30 to $45 per course. And it really kind of depends on the course type. So if you take a course that has a lab connected to it, so you're actually you know using materials within the lab, uh, that might have a slightly higher fee than a course that is just in the classroom. Um, and then your books are going to be, this is just an estimated, between $50 to $150 per book. You can absolutely find books less expensive. There's a variety of different places you can find books, and we can definitely talk more um, while you're getting signed up for the program of where you can find those. Um, but that'll end up being kind of like the second biggest expense and then there is some transportation options so we do offer a discounted bus pass so you can get a c-tran bus pass for 15 dollars, and then you have to pay the full price if you end up needing a replacement um, but all of that comes down to this cost comparison you see down here so a full-time student is going to be paying just over 1700 dollars um, to go full-time including their fees and everything else and then for course fees for a running start student is going to end up around two $258 uh, or so depending on you know what types of classes that they're taking um, and that's if they're taking as many classes as possible per term and then in terms of the fee waivers you can see these listed down here so a fee waiver you can be eligible for one if you receive free or reduced uh, uh, cost lunch at your high school, uh, any type of public assistance for food, whether that be SNAP benefits or uh, EBT, often called food stamps. Um, again, if you are connected to the FOSTA system in any way, shape, or form, you can be eligible for that fee waiver um, or receiving, you and your family are receiving any type of social security benefits. So that's how you uh, qualify for the fee waiver. And then we also have scholarships available to receive uh, book funding as well. So some students are able to get essentially all of their costs covered um, uh, just through the waivers and through the book scholarships. Okay, perfect. Okay. Vamos a hablar sobre exactamente qué es lo que un estudiante está pagando. Y aquí, Brian nos enseña que un costo es, una de las cosas que vale $9 es un ID para los estudiantes, pero realmente esos $9 no es mucho porque esa tarjeta les ayuda para entrar a muchos eventos al colegio o hasta les da descuentos a veces en otros lugares. Y luego tenemos una tarifa de Associated Students que será $7, $25 por cada trimestre. Y esto ayuda a pagar la tecnología y otras cosas que necesita el colegio. Y luego tenemos las tarifas de cada curso que a lo mejor son $30, $45 por curso. Y esto solamente es para las clases que necesitan más materiales para hacer esas clases, como vamos a decir, las clases de ciencia, donde tienen un laboratorio para trabajar en sus experimentos, todo eso. Y luego tenemos los libros que hablamos que valen como unos 50 a 150 dólares por cada libro, pero no todo el tiempo se necesitan que comprar los libros nuevos. Pues se pueden rentar en otros lugares que ya están usados para que baje ese costo. Y luego también cobran este 15 dólares por trimestre en transportación y esto es para que el, el autobús los pueda llevar. Y luego um, también habló de otra vez del, del este, comparando los, este, el precio entre el, un estudiante de Running Star y un estudiante de tiempo completo del estado de Washington. Aquí vemos que usualmente pagan $1,773 dólares con 15 centavos cada trimestre y un estudiante de Running Star solamente paga $258. Dólares. Y um, le pregunté a Brian que me dijera un poquito más de quién son los que califican para el ayudo de la tarifa. Y él dice que son las personas que um, es, han este, tenido la comida gratis en las escuelas y también las personas que han estado por el programa de las estampillas de la ayuda de la comida y también las personas que han estado en el sistema de hogares de guarda. También esas personas califican. Y unas personas que están recibiendo los beneficios del Social Security. Entonces, hay muchos modos de que una persona pueda este, no pagar esa tarifa que les ayudaría un poquito más. Como le dije, en mi caso, yo no, no tuve que pagar esa tarifa. Yo pude este, 
no, yo pude este, pagar menos en el Running Star que solamente pagué los libros porque yo era una persona que me daban la comida gratis en la escuela por esa razón. Ok, thank you so much for, for that uh, flyer. That helped out a lot. Good visual. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll send it to you as well. So that way you can have access to it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Great, awesome. Um, so when we're talking about cost, um, can my uh, can the student receive financial aid to cover cost of books? Puede mi estudiante recibir ayuda económica para cubrir el costo de los libros? Yeah. So traditional financial aid, like when we're talking about financial aid at the college level, usually you're talking about FAFSA and WASFA. Um, so running that doesn't necessarily apply to running start students because they um, it's a college and a high school program or a dual enrollment program. So they're not going to be eligible for FAFSA or WASFA. There's no point of submitting those, but you are eligible to apply for book scholarships and those fee waivers. So the things that you are charged, um, you know, the fees and the book prices, you are able to apply for assistance for that. Um, and typically, uh, the fee waivers, you start applying for them once you're actually starting to get enrolled in the program. Um, and then we just apply those to your account and remove those charges. Okay. Brian dice que usualmente los estudiantes de Running Start no son elegibles para el financial aid, que es usualmente lo conocen las personas como FAFSA o WAFSA porque son todavía no estudiantes de la prepa y no necesariamente son estudiantes completos del colegio. Las personas que, que sí son elegibles para financial aid usualmente son las personas que ya están completamente en el colegio. Y bueno, este Running Star es un programa que es con la prepa y parte del colegio y por eso no son elegibles para este programa. Pero dice que siempre un, un estudiante puede aplicar para unas becas para que les ayude con los libros y también decimos con la ayuda de la tarifa para que no necesiten que pagar eso. Y dice Brian que ya la um, cancelan la tarifa ya, ya cuando están en el programa. Ellos ven qué, qué califica un estudiante y luego allí le quitan ese cargo. Can homeschooled and private students um, participate in Running Start? ¿Pueden participar en Running Start los estudiantes educados en el hogar y en escuelas privadas? Yeah, they absolutely can. The thing to keep in mind is that Running Start is funded through public high schools. So you just need to be enrolled at a public high school. It's not uncommon for a Running Start student who is coming from homeschool to get enrolled at the public high school but never actually attend any courses at that high school. Instead, they just use it as the ability to get connected to Clark or Running Start um, and start taking classes at the community college. But as long as you're moving your enrollment to a local public high school um, in the state of Washington, you and are considered junior or senior, you'll be able to start the Running Start program. Um, and like I said, because uh, it's a common question, you do not need to attend any classes at that public high school. You just need to use them to get your enrollment form uh, completed to get that permission from the high school counselor uh, to start taking those classes. So as long as you're enrolled at the public high school and you have junior and senior standing, absolutely. Dice Brian que sí, los estudiantes que son educados en el hogar y en las escuelas privadas sí pueden estar en este programa. Y las personas que son educadas en el hogar necesitan que inscribir en una prepa porque este es un programa que Clark College trabaja con las prepas en las áreas. Esto no significa que ese estudiante necesita que ir a ese high school o esa prepa, solamente ser inscribido en esa prepa para que ellos puedan este, entrar en el programa de Running Start. Um, ok. Perfect. So how is junior or senior standing determined for homeschool students who want to participate in Running Start? ¿Cómo se determina la posición de junior or senior para los estudiantes educados en el hogar que desean participar en Running Start? Yeah, so for that process, um, the school that you uh, enroll into are going to be the ones who are going to establish your uh, grade level. Um, and then they're also going to be the ones who approve your essentially your access to running start. Um, some schools are going to look at like age appropriateness, um, others review credits and prior learning. Um, and in some cases, there's like a standardized achievement test that can be used um, if there isn't like, you know, proper documentation of the students like home uh, 
the homeschooling essentially. So basically it's up to the district. Um, if you are homeschooled or coming from a private school and looking to, to enroll at a public school and take advantage of Running Start, start that process early. So if there is like a an additional math course or an additional uh, humanities course that you need to take for them to say that you're eligible, you have the time to do that. Uh, but essentially the um, the onus is on the district to determine your grade level and your eligibility for running start that's not something we can do at the clark level bueno dice brian que el distrito escolar de la prepa es el que escoge qué nivel está estudiante si está en nivel de junior o senior unas cosas que toman en cuenta es la edad cuántos créditos tienen y a lo mejor en veces en caso deben de tomar un examen um, okay, so I talked about the age, the credit, um, and then sometimes taking an exam. Did you mention anything else you wanted me to say? Um, age appropriateness. Um, oh, they sometimes offer credit for prior learning, which is essentially just um, if you've taken part of like any program or essentially, but honestly, most homeschool students have a record of that. So it's probably not worth necessarily mentioning. Okay. Honestly, I think as long as you highlight the fact that it's up to the district to mm -hmm. um, confirm it and that they, they should start early um, if they do want to take advantage of that. And when I say early, um, you know, beginning of their sophomore year, they should kind of start those conversation in that process. Okay, sí. Entonces, Brian dice que, sí, um, el distrito es el que escoge en qué nivel está ese, ese, ese estudiante y si es un estudiante que es educado en el hogar y sabe que quiere estar en este programa de Running Start, es mucho más mejor que empiecen a tener esas conversaciones con un consejero um, en el año de, vamos a decir, en el sophomore year, que será el grado 10, para que sepan cuáles clases necesitan que tener para estar listos para entrar a este Running Start program. Okay, so what are the deadlines for Running Start? ¿Cuáles son los plazos para Running Start? So there aren't too many hard deadlines for Running Start. There's absolutely a, um, a recommended timeline for getting connected with advising, uh, getting registered, et cetera. But in terms of like hard deadlines, the only big one is the enrollment verification form, which is the form that has to be completed by your high school counselor and your parent or guardian that essentially gives us the ability to charge your school district for your uh, tuition. Those forms are usually due um, before the first payment deadline of each term. So it's usually like the first or second week of classes. Um, but the earlier you start that process and getting those forms to us, the earlier you can get access to registration, um, get advised and just kind of get everything in order before you start those classes. Um, so really in terms of like a recommended timeline, you should start really thinking and planning for running start really in your sophomore year. Start having those conversations with um, your advisor or your counselor that's at the high school, um, conversations with your family, getting the sense of kind of what are kind of your future goals. You don't have to have like an absolute this is what I want to accomplish, you know, in my life. I don't think very many people who are 15, 16 can. I certainly couldn't. Um, but you should have an idea of kind of what types of classes you want to take and what you, the type of experience you want to have in Running Start. Um, so you should start thinking about that your sophomore year or if you just plan on doing it your senior year in your junior year. And you should plan on applying to the uh, to Clark College by the end of your sophomore year if you're looking to get started as a junior. And it's best if you get that enrollment verification form into us before you leave for summer break. Um, because our advising actually starts in late spring. It's entirely possible for you to have a um, college schedule for the following fall completed before you leave uh, for a summer break uh, at the end of your sophomore year in high school, as long as you start that process early. So again, the only real deadlines are getting those uh, enrollment verification forms in uh, before the first payment deadline of the term, which is usually like the first or second week of the term starting. Um, but outside of that, we absolutely recommend you starting this process in the spring before you even start in the program. So that way you have plenty of time to connect with advising, connect with enrollment enrollment services to kind of get all your questions answered and make sure you have as many resources as possible. 
Okay, and just to um, clarify, the enrollment verification form, that's, an, that's kind of just a form that you give to your counselor to make sure that you're taking the right high school yes. classes at the college, correct? Yeah, so um, your high school counselor signs off on it, your, and they kind of have a, they'll give kind of an estimate of the types of classes that you can take, but there's flexibility in there. Like if it's not a perfect, you take you know, history, this history class, this term, your advisor can work with you and we can be flexible in that way. But it's important that you just have that form into us so we can start that process with you. Um, because otherwise what happens is you'll end up registering like the week before classes start in the fall. And there are students who do that and are absolutely successful, but you just don't have time to ask those questions, get connected with an advisor and kind of make sense of what you're doing before you get started. So ideally you have that stuff, uh, that enrollment verification and form in by the end of spring so you can get access to advising started in, starting in late spring. Um, but the only actual deadline we hold you to is getting that enrollment form in uh, before the first or second week of classes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, bueno, uh, Brian dice que no exactamente hay muchos plazos para Running Start, solamente de que estás seguro que quieres estar en este programa um, en el grado 10 y especialmente empezar a hacer todo el papel o todo el documento que necesitas en la primavera para que ya estés listo y tengas un formulario de tus clases en la primavera, que significa el año antes de entrar en este programa y los consejeros te van a dar un documento donde ellos te dicen estas son las clases que nosotros necesitamos que tomen en, um, para que sea un requisito de la high school y estas son las clases que las puedes tomar en el colegio son una, una clase que son del mismo del mismo tema y el mismo nivel um, entonces eso es lo más importante de saber cuáles son las clases que, que son requisitos de la high school que las puedes tomar en el, en el colegio y como dijo otra vez saber que quieres hacer este programa estar preparado y de verdad hacer todo el papelero en la primavera para que ya estés listo en el otoño entres el colegio y ya tienes todas tus clases dice que a veces sí hay unos estudiantes que escogen sus clases una semana antes que empiece el trimestre dice que sí puede pasar donde un estudiante sí puede elegir las clases que necesita pero usualmente es más mejor que esté más preparado un trimestre avanzado para, para que sepa que va a tener esas clases que sí necesita para graduar la high school. Um, and just to um, verify, because I remember for me, um, mm -hmm. as a Running Start student, I was, I had like early registration. Is that a mm -hmm. thing at Clark College? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the benefit of getting that form in early is you get to register a lot earlier than, um, you know, a student who gets that form in a little bit later. Um, so the earlier you connect with us, the earlier you can get registered for classes. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's considered early registration, but it is within that first, uh, you know, group of students who are registering for classes. So the earlier you start, not only can you get your questions answered, you also have the biggest selection of possible class times and you get to set your schedule the way you want it as yeah. opposed to only having an 8 a.m. class available and that's your only option. Um, so it just gives you a lot more flexibility in creating your schedule and picking classes. Yeah. So una cosa que le pregunté a Brian es que si los estudiantes de Running Start tienen este, pueden elijar, elegir sus clases primero que otros estudiantes y sí, la respuesta es que sí. Esa es una cosa buena que Running Start hace es que deja que los estudiantes de la prepa sean los primeros el primer grupo de estudiantes que escogen sus clases. Entonces, eso significa a veces que hay muchísima más flexibilidad en el formulario. Eso no significa que a lo mejor necesita que tomar una clase a las 8 de la mañana. A lo mejor la puede tomar a las 12 de la tarde. Entonces, eso significa que el estudiante puede realmente hacer su formulario como él quiere para que le ayude con su, con su este, schedule de, no sé, de un trabajo o si tienen otras cosas que tienen que hacer en su vida. Y por eso dice Brian que es muy importante que el estudiante esté preparado, avanzado en sus clases para que pueda elegir las clases que sí necesita para su prepa. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, how many terms can my student be in Running Start? ¿Cuántos términos académicos pueden tener mi estudiante en Running Start? So, all Running Start students are able to take classes during the fall, winter, and spring term. Um, so, usually, most students are doing six terms of Running Start with three each year. Um, that is the most standard, and that's what you'll see on most of like our website, et cetera. 
However, this year we actually got some additional funding to assist certain students for summer running start as well. Specifically, we were able to um, help students who were uh, sophomore going into their junior year. So if they wanted to get kind of a head start, start with College 101 potentially, or just take a single class, they were able to do that this summer if they got signed up in time. And then also students who had graduated this last June from their high school, if they were still with, if they were within a certain amount of credits from achieving their associate's degree, they were able to take classes tuition free uh, this summer as well. So in general, it's usually six terms, so three terms each year, but we are trying to build some infrastructure and flexibility for students to be able to continue during summer uh, to you know, kind of build out that transcript um, or potentially complete some remaining requirements before you know, they lose Running Start eligibility in general. Brian dice que usualmente un estudiante de Running Start está en, el, en las clases en el otoño, en el invierno y en la primavera. Usualmente hacen seis término, términos académicos en el Clark, Clark College, pero a veces hay unas chances donde un estudiante puede tomar clases también en el verano. Um, can you go ahead and uh, repeat, please, um, about the, the summer, how you're trying to give a little bit more of a chance so that way I can repeat that? Yeah, so this is, this is brand new funding as of, I believe, June, I think we were awarded, um, but essentially it allows us to give some additional funding for students to take classes uh, in the summertime as long as they meet specific eligibility requirements. So specifically um, students who were um, in between their sophomore and junior year, they were able to kind of get a head start taking some classes this summer, potentially taking College 101 or, you know, another introductory class, um, or students who were um, that graduated high school this past June, if they were within a certain amount of credits of completing their associate's degree, they were able to continue over the summer uh, so they can meet that credit or amount and receive their associate's degree by the end of the summer. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So Brian dice que ahora tiene unos nuevos fondos en el Clark College donde un estudiante puede tomar clases en el, en el verano. En este caso sería cuando un estudiante quiere estar hasta más avanzado y en el verano del sophomore y junior year pueden tomar una clase donde los ponían más avanzado ya para cuando lleguen al, al otoño y ya están, ya tienen todas sus clases muy listas. Y también al mismo tiempo un estudiante puede tomar clases en el verano cuando vamos a decir que a lo mejor no estuvo tan avanzado y le faltó una o dos clases que necesitan que tener para que puedan graduar con su social degree, entonces lo pueden tomar en el verano para que sí completan toda su, su social degree. Ok. So, is it possible to obtain both a high school diploma and a college associate's degree after completing two years in the Running Start program? ¿Es posible obtener una diploma de escuela secundaria y un título universitario asociado después de completar dos años en el programa de Running Start? Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, I believe, you know, of... I want to say around 1,800 Running Start students that we have each term. Uh, I believe each year we graduate around 350 of them with their associates when they complete the program. Um, so it's not a requirement that you complete the associate's degree, but the associate's degree can have some benefits if you are looking to transfer to another institution, especially another institution within uh, the state of Washington. So it's absolutely possible, but you do need to be attending Clark essentially full time. Um, um, because it is a 90 credit degree and you usually take about 15 credits per term. Each class is five college credits, um, roughly five college credits. There are some that are under, but most classes that Running Start students are taking are five. So you need to be taking three a term so you can hit 45 credits a year. And then in your two years, you can hit that 90 credit degree. So it absolutely is possible. It just takes planning uh, from the very beginning to make sure that you're hitting all the requirements for that degree. And then with that summer funding, there is a little bit of flexibility if you do need to take some additional coursework during the summer. Ok. Dice Brian que usualmente de los 1,800 estudiantes que hacen el programa de Running Star, al último de los dos años, como 350 de ellos gradúan con su associate's degree, que significa que ellos completaron um, al mismo tiempo su graduación de la prepa y, y del colegio. 
Um, dice que no, no es un requisito que si vamos a estar en este programa, necesita que graduar en dos años. Recuérdese que este programa solamente es para avanzar. Entonces, si un estudiante siente que necesita más tiempo para completar sus clases en el Clark College, está completamente bien. Pero sí es posible graduar de la prepa y de graduar del Community College al mismo tiempo y luego transferir, transferirse a un universitario y solamente le van a, este, usualmente necesitan otros dos años más para graduarse de la universidad. Um, y también dijo Brian que recuérdese que si un estudiante realmente necesita un poquito más tiempo, ahora tienen esos fondos para que tomen estas clases en el verano. So, who should um, contact the enrollment service office? ¿Quién debe comunicarse con la oficina de servicios de inscripción? Yeah, so enrollment services, uh, first off, can help with essentially anything related to your application, your enrollment verification form, or just getting started at the college in general. Um, so they really kind of are a catch-all for anyone who's looking to get started, whether that be through Running Start or another program. Ideally, it is the student who is reaching out to them. Um, one thing to keep in mind, there are some additional uh, kind of privacy rules for students who are enrolled at the college. There are ways that you can get some additional information about your student as long as you're submitting the correct forms. But in general, we want to be working directly with the student to kind of give them that opportunity to really, you know, have a say over their education and then also to start that process of, you know, they are a college student and they're the one who should really be in charge of, uh, you know, what their goals are and accomplishing their goals. So ideally, it is the student who's reaching out and asking those questions. That being said, if a parent calls, uh, we're not just going to hang up the phone on you. Uh, we will absolutely answer your question as long as we're, you know, respecting your student's privacy. Um, you will get grade reports through the student's um, uh, high school um, transcript and grade report, uh, their grades will be posted there. But in general, from the college, we're primarily going to be communicating with the student. So ideally, it's a student who's calling. But that being said, if you are a parent or guardian or just someone who cares uh, about your student, reach out to us and we'll try to help you and answer your questions as best we can. Brian dice que usualmente es un estudiante que contacta el colegio porque ahora necesitan que saber que cuando un estudiante está en, en este programa de Running Start, si sí son un estudiante de colegio, entonces ellos ya van a tener este, la responsabilidad de, de contactar el colegio, estar, um, estar con este, los consejeros y todo eso lo que se necesita hacer para graduar de este programa. Pero dice Brian que obviamente si eres un padre que tiene una pregunta, no te van a colgar el teléfono. Ellos están aquí para este, darte respuestas a tus preguntas, pero usualmente dice que ellos quieren trabajar directamente con el estudiante para que el estudiante esté en, un, um, en una línea bien para estar en este programa. Um, have some things in the program changed due to COVID-19? ¿Han cambiado algunas cosas del programa debido al, al COVID-19? So, absolutely. I mean, like most institutions, we had to go fully online, um, you know, during the kind of peak of the pandemic. Um, we are coming back more and more in person, but that being said, there's still a lot of online options. And we actually have some Running Start students who are engaging entirely online. You as an incoming Running Start student, you get to kind of make a decision on how you want your schedule set up. It could be fully in person, it could be a mix of online and in person, or just entirely online. So I'd say that is sort of like the biggest thing is that, um, that there's a lot more flexibility in how you set up your schedule, whether you want your remote options or you want in-person options. Um, we are a fully vaccinated campus, so that's kind of a big change. Uh, so if you do want to take uh, courses in person, you do need to be fully vaccinated, um, but you are able to take classes online if you're not. So um, there still is that option to engage even if you're not fully vaccinated. And I would say the additional online courses really kind of made room for that, right? Um, and then there's a lot more options to connect virtually. Advising is available for virtual appointments, career services, enrollments are very available virtually. So you can get a lot of your questions answered just sitting on your couch at home. So I would say those are the big things that a lot more of our classes and our resources are available online while still having that in-person component if that's something that you really want from your experience. 
Ahí dice que una de las cosas más importantes que ha cambiado por el COVID-19 es que para atender a las clases en el campus, el estudiante necesita que estar vacunado contra el COVID-19, pero si el estudiante no está vacunado contra el COVID-19, pueden tener las clases en línea porque dicen lo, la cosa que cambió muchísimo en, en este tiempo es que muchas de las clases son virtuales. Y todavía son virtuales. Si un estudiante quiere hacer las clases completamente en la computadora virtualmente, lo pueden hacer. O si quieren estar en el campus y tomar todas sus clases allí en persona, también pueden hacer eso. O si también pueden hacer un poquito de los dos a esa um, oportunidad que pueden hacer también. Um, bueno, um, let's talk about um, what are the precautions that have been taken to keep our students healthy um, during the time of this program. We talked about the vaccines a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. ¿Cuáles son las precauciones que se han tomado para mantener a nuestros estudiantes sanos durante su tiempo en el programa? Yeah, so in addition to being a vaccine mandated campus, um, currently we don't have a, a mask mandate, but they are highly encouraged for our students who are in classrooms. Um, as you're walking around campus, you'll see a lot of staff are still wearing masks um, just to make sure that, you know, students are safe within our spaces. Um, there's a lot more um, just disinfectant and hand sanitizer, etc. Um, so in terms of like COVID-19, we really are following, you know, what the state recommends in terms of keeping people safe and then also, you know, providing those options for masking, et cetera, when students really need it. Um, we also have a health screening. So for anyone who comes onto campus, uh, whether they're a guest student, you have to, you know, um, you know, do a screening that makes sure that you're not having any symptoms, you weren't exposed to anyone with COVID-19. So that way, you know, we're doing as much as we can not to spread it here on campus. Um, but in addition to like physical health, we also are, you know, aware of mental health as well. So we also offer resources for students. Um, we have student success coaches, which are in addition to advising, in addition to tutoring, but they really are just a resource for students to get additional support on campus, whether that be just someone to go and vent to and talk um, about what's going on in their personal lives or what's going on within you know their academic career that they're trying to pursue here at Clark um, or if they just need connection with resources etc um, so the student success coaches can just offer that additional support for students so they don't feel like they're alone navigating this all by themselves um, which really helps you know with students who have a lot of anxiety around that because it is kind of a big deal to transition to the college campus so we want to make sure that there are people available to help students navigate that so they're not becoming overwhelmed and they're able to just focus on their coursework and be successful. In addition to those student success coaches, we also have counseling on campus. So students can receive some counseling if they need that as well. So definitely doing some work to um, make sure that we're stopping the spread of COVID-19 while also offering those resources so students can be um, productive mentally, academically, and then physically as well. We also have a full fitness center on campus so students are able to go exercise and work out um, and they're able to do that completely free and it's just available to them as a Clark College student. Awesome, that sounds really, really great. Uh, Brian dice que um, obviamente en este tiempo han cambiado muchas cosas por el COVID-19. Aunque no hay un mandato de cubrebocas en el campus, sí es algo que recomiendan para que otros estudiantes se sientan más seguros. Y dice que cuando estás en el campus, a lo mejor a veces ves que el personal todavía está usando estas cubrebocas porque ellos se sienten que quieren hacer un paso más avanzado para sentirse más seguros. Al mismo tiempo, no todo es um, solamente de la salud física también hay de la salud mental y ellos dicen que hay muchísimos apoyos de allí en el colegio por si un estudiante se siente nervioso o si necesita ayuda adicional ellos tienen muchísimos programas para que los puedan ayudar con lo que sea de la salud mental y también dice que si una persona sí que trabaja un poquito más en su salud física que también hay un gimnasio para los estudiantes que están ahí en el colegio para que puedan hacer eso y ayudar en su vida uh, físicamente. Does Clark College provide transportation for students who would like to participate in Running Start? Um, Clark College proporciona transportación para estudiantes que quisieran participar en Running Start? So we offer a discounted bus pass. So all students are able to get a CTRAN pass, which does have uh, multiple routes to stop here on campus. Um, so that's kind of like the biggest thing that we offer. So that is about the reduced cost, it ends up being about $15 to get that pass. So it is reduced quite a bit. So that's the biggest thing in terms of like transportation resources is that bus pass. 
Brian dice que sí hay un, este, un descuento que los estudiantes pueden tomar, um, que sería del autobús, que solamente les costaría 15 dólares cada trimestre, donde el autobús tiene varias diferentes este, um, um, routes cada, en todo el campus para que pueda transportar los estudiantes. Um, how safe is Clark Campus for underage um, students? ¿Qué tan seguro es el campus para Clark para los estudiantes menores de edad? Yeah, safety is a primary concern. I mean, if you can't feel safe and, you know, uh, you know, feel like you're in a safe environment, you're not going to be able to be successful. So it really is a primary concern for us. Um, so we have um, security and a safety department here on campus, and they have someone who's here 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So even if you're here at the library late one evening doing studying, there is, you know, safety and security here on campus that full time. Um, and then they offer off, they also offer some resources for students specifically. Um, they do obviously safety patrols of campus. So you'll see them walking around pretty frequently. It's not uncommon that one of our uh, safety officers will be directing students to classes outside, especially in the first week of classes. Um, they'll do escort to cars and buildings upon request. So if you don't feel safe walking yourself to your vehicle, to the bus stop, or to your next class, uh, they'll walk with you essentially. Um, they offer assistance for if you lock yourself out of your car or your battery's dead, they can offer assistance there. We have emergency phones all around campus. So if you are feeling unsafe or you need some additional support, you can just pick up that phone and someone will answer right away. In addition, there is something, um, and this is something to just know in terms of looking at colleges, every single college is required to report the crime that happens on their campus. So any type of incident that happens on their campus, they actually have to report that each year. It's something called the Clary Act. Um, and if you just look Clary Act on our website, you'll be able to find statistics about crime on our campus, but not only our campus, any campus um, in the country is gonna have to follow that act as well. Um, so we do have to publish that information. And if you look through it, there. We're, fairly, we're a fairly safe campus. Um, and then we also do acknowledge that um, Running Start students are under 18. So we take some you know, special precautions to make sure that they're not in any conditions that are gonna be unsafe for them. And if we do identify some sort of issue, we reach out to that student and that family directly to make accommodations so that they can be in a safe environment. Bueno, Brian dice que es muy importante para el colegio que los estudiantes se sientan seguros y por esa razón ellos tienen oficiales de seguridad en el campus caminando todo el tiempo. Vamos a decir, si un estudiante no se siente seguro, no se siente seguro para ir a una clase, le puede pedir al oficial de seguridad que lo caminen a esa clase para que no esté solito. Y al mismo tiempo también estos oficiales de seguridad les pueden ayudar a los estudiantes por si um, a lo mejor dejaron las llaves adentro del carro y no, ahora no se pueden meter, ellos les pueden ayudar con eso. También dice Brian que los colegios um, necesitan que reportar el crimen que pasa en el campus. Entonces, esto se llama la ley, you said Clary, Clary Act? Yeah, C-L-E-R-Y is what it's called. Um, but every college in the country essentially has to report this each year. So you can actually go and look at each individual campus that you may be interested in, not only just for running start, but then also, you know, when you're doing your college search later, um, it's something you're able to look into. Bueno, Brian dice que sí, es, um, todos los colegios necesitan que reportar el crimen que pasa en el campus, entonces significa que usted puede ver qué exactamente ha pasado en ese campus y para que se sienta un poquito más seguro sabiendo exactamente cómo es la seguridad en ese campus. Um, y dice Brian que esto es en todos los colegios a un nivel nacional. And I guess another thing I can add is um, there's also an alert system. So if there is the most common alert that's going to come in is usually around like you know weather um you know if things are closed because of snow etc um but you as a parent or you know another, like my spouse is actually signed up on it they can actually receive those same types of you know notifications so if there is something happening on campus you can be notified immediately through email text um, and i believe there's a phone call option as well but um so that's a way to get like information right away if there is something going on um yeah so there's a really robust alert system as well so if you want to get information right away you can Adicionalmente, Brian dice que tienen un sistema de alerta 
que por si algo está pasando en el campus, ustedes pueden recibir una alerta. Um, esto no solamente es para los estudiantes, también es, podría ser para los padres para que ustedes tengan esa misma alerta que están viendo sus estudiantes. Um, y esto trabaja por un, por un mensaje o puede ser una llamada al mismo tiempo. Um, so just to kind of like wrap up our conversation yeah. for today, where can we find more information in Spanish about the program? Donde podemos encontrar más información en español sobre el programa de Running Start? Yeah, so the biggest thing that we do each year are our Running Start info nights. These start typically at the end of January and run all the way through March. Um, but these are roughly hour and a half, two hour long presentations that really kind of go through the nuts and bolts of everything that you need to do uh, to become a Running Start student. And they offer it in the spring with the intention of sophomores attending so that they can get enrolled to start in their junior year. And those are translated not only into Spanish, but into Russian as well, um, and then also American Sign Language. So um, those are going to be, that's going to be kind of like your initial starting point for most students. And then in addition, we're also working on some materials that are in Spanish that give a little bit more um, information, like the form that I showed earlier um, that kind of had a cost breakdown. We want to make sure that that's in Spanish. And I will make sure that you, you all get access to that so you can share it with your community as well. Um, but those Running Start Info Nights, definitely sign up for one. Uh, another thing to kind of add is most likely your high school is going to host their own info night. It's possible that the information may differ. Reach out to us if you have any questions or if you hear anything that doesn't quite sound right. Uh, we do have staff on campus that speak Spanish as well, and that can work with families if they want to come on campus and have a conversation. Just reach out to us and let us know. We can definitely plan that. Brian dice que usualmente ellos van a tener presentaciones de Running Star empezando en enero hasta marzo y también las prepas usualmente también tienen su propia noche de presentación de Running Start. Él dice que será la misma información, pero por si una razón tiene más preguntas, pueden contactar el colegio para que estén um, con las respuestas que necesitan. Um, pero sí, dice que um, va a haber más información en las prepas y también en el card college si ustedes tienen este más preguntas. Um, is there anything else you would like to add today? ¿Hay algo más que dice, quieres decir de este programa? Most of that just running start is an awesome opportunity. Um, again, you know, it's college level, so a lot of people have that thought that it's for the highest achieving high GPA student, but honestly, it can be a good resource for any student. As long as you are really kind of forward thinking and thinking about your future, um, if you're looking for something different than the regular high school experience, or you're just a goal-oriented person, like this can be a really good opportunity for you. Um, and if you have any questions, please, please, please just reach out to us and let us know uh, so we can have that conversation so you can have the best information possible so you can make the decision that's best for you and your family. Brian quiere decir que esta, este programa de Running Start es una oportunidad muy increíble para muchas personas, que muchos estudiantes pueden ser de esta oportunidad. No solamente son para los estudiantes que son al nivel muy, más, más alto académico, puede ser un recurso muy bueno para todos los estudiantes. Um, dice que si um, tienen más preguntas y quieren saber si este programa es realmente para usted o su estudiante, pueden contactarlo a él y él le puede dar un poquito más respuestas sobre este programa. No, thank you so much, Ryan, for being here with us today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day and just talking to us about Running Start. Like I told you, I did Running Start myself, so I know how great of a program it is and just how two years can save you a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money. So I would definitely say this is something that students should definitely take advantage of. I know that I have so many friends who, to this day now, tell me I wish I would have done Running Start because it yeah. really does. It really does advance you so much and it's a really great program. Yeah, it really is. And just to kind of clarify and just reiterate, it does not need to be that you completely abandon your high school and you're only going to Clark. It can be you just take one English class or you just take a single math class just to kind of get your feet wet and like, you know, learn about the college experience. And then if you want to keep attending, you absolutely can. So there is no one size fits all experience in running start. It can really be flexible to your needs and what you're looking to achieve. 
Bueno, yo le dije a Brian que sí, realmente este programa sí es muy increíble. Yo tomé este programa y hasta este día, muchísimos años después, tengo amigos que me dicen, Ay, ojalá que yo um, pude tener esa oportunidad de hacer Running Star. I should have done Running Star. Y es porque la razón es que este programa sí, de verdad, te avanza muchísimo y te ayuda mucho, mucho final, uh, con el dinero. Porque son dos años que no necesitas que pagar por un colegio y puedes este, salvar muchísimo, muchísimo dinero. Oh, well, thank you so much, Brian, for being here with us. Muchas gracias, Brian, por estar aquí por nosotros. Um, uh, muchas gracias a todos ustedes que están viendo el show también. Y muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta noche y compartir información tan importante de Running Star con nosotros y la comunidad, Brian. Los esperamos el próximo mes donde estaremos informando a nuestra gente sobre el programa educativo individualizado para nuestros estudiantes que tienen programas de aprendizaje. No se lo olvide acompañarnos todos los martes a las 7 de la tarde con nuestras charlas donde nos enfocamos en la salud mental con la consejera Liliana. Buenas noches y hasta la próxima. Thank you, Brian. Have a good night. Thank you.